Hi, I'm Eddie Moretti. Welcome to the Vice Podcast. My guest today is Greta Gerwig. Hi. Hi. Welcome. Um, so I want to talk uh, first ab about Francis Ha and mm -hmm. you know it's how it's doing and yes. you know critically it's been acclaimed across the board. I don't think I've ever read a, a bad review of the film. I loved it. That a huge you know uh, 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 plus. Yeah. But but <laughs> like how's the film doing as a film commercially and you know how many screens are you on and all that good stuff. Um, well, it's actually doing really well commercially, like on its terms. I mean, it opened in um, four theaters its first weekend, and then it expanded to 81 its second weekend. And then this weekend, it's starting, it's expanding to 121 theaters or something. There's no stopping this film. Yeah, it's just, gonna, <laughs> it's, just <laughs> it's exponential growth. But, um, but it's, I mean, it's like doing really well. Like people are really going to see it, and I think one of the things that we didn't totally know is like, do people still go to the movie theaters? Right. And um, apparently they do. Apparently so they do. It's yeah. exciting. I mean, I'm I knock wood. I mean, it's still going, but I think yeah. I think it's it's all signs point to yes. Yeah, and so and it opened initially just here in New York or New York and L.A. New York and LA. And yeah. did, was there? Did you notice? Because you went to both yeah. premieres, probably yeah. different reactions in, in each town, or yeah. I mean, um, I mean, I've noticed in New York. I mean, we've done it New York, LA, between different festivals too, in um, Telluride, Colorado, and in Toronto, and in Berlin, and we talked oh, to cool. like Interesting. Paris press and. Um, I mean, luckily everybody seems to like it, but they focus on really different but things. But that's and that's yeah. the that's the interesting part. What are they focusing on? Let's say in Europe. In Europe, they're actually really focusing on. They f feel it's a film about class, which wow. is and every I never single would have journalist got that. brought it up. They were like, it's about class and. In what 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 way? What's like the... she feels that there that like this oh, sort right, of subtle right. distinction between like who has money and who doesn't, and how that changes what you can do. And she's not destitute, but she's not where her roommate. And it's sort of like these yeah. and, f and like these subtle distinction. Anyway, do, do, they're do, all let, obsessed with that. I'm gonna do this a lot because that's yeah. what I do. I yeah. just jump in and interject. Yeah, no, please. I will fuck yeah. up your flow completely. No, the I don't whole have time. a flow. <laughs> but that's interesting. So do they think Sophie? Is yeah. Mary Patch just for the money? No, they don't think she's marrying him just for the money, but they do. They do talk about that difference, that jump. It's not. It's not. It's not about like a judgment on the character as much as it is like that. This is actually functional in this world, and it's like between this and this, it's not like a huge spread, but it's enough. But it's, how do you feel about that? Because it's in the film, like, yeah. first Sophie's gonna go to Tribeca, which because is like, Because she can whoa, afford like, it, that's, yeah. that, Which is where, you know, Francis would like to go, maybe. But can't. But can't. Yeah. And then there's people that have flats in Paris, and yeah. like, oh, wouldn't it be, I'm just gonna yeah. go and hang out yeah. and kind of, you know, mimic this lifestyle. Well, so right. how do you feel about that? There is that. Yeah, I mean, we, it's deliberately in there. It's something we were deliberately doing of this kind of trying to find a way because I think sometimes financial circumstances in movies can be a little like they're background noise, but they're not like functional in a plot. And we wanted like a whole like when she gets a tax rebate that that like sets off a whole chain of events and right. that that actually means something in her life. Um, but yeah, we we did talk about it a lot. It, it's hard often to actually put dollars and cents on money issues in a film because right. it gets dated so quickly. It's true. And yeah. uh, like in Annie Hall, when um, Woody Allen is like, you know, they're charging you four hundred dollars a month. I know, I know. It's so cu cute now. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting because that moment when Francis gets the 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 treasury check yeah. on, on, for her return. Yeah. It doesn't come out all the way, no, does no. it? Well, part of the not coming out of all the way without giving too much, we didn't want to see her whole name. Um, Smart. So it was that too, Smart. but um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, yeah. So it's I mean, class to the Europeans. It's a it's a, it's a, it's yeah, a they're, interesting. They're just more engaged with that part right. of it. It's just kind of fascinating and sort of like ambition and how that mixes. But yeah, they're much more attuned to that. Attuned to that, but loving the film 
regardless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then um, I would say LA, um, a lot more parents in LA of kids who moved to New York. Right. They came up to me like, crying after screenings and they were like, our daughter is in New York and this movie makes me notice she's not having sex and she's okay. <laughs> and, I yeah. like, and I was like, well, I don't, I don't know what your daughter is yeah. doing, but I... She probably yeah, is yeah. having sex. But um, I feel like, parent, like parents in LA are particularly moved by it because I think, you know, it's a, a thing they identify. Same with San Francisco. That was also true of San Francisco. Right. I feel like, I feel like, um, I've traveled with this film and talked to so many people, and I feel like a small town politician. <laughs> Why? <laughs> well, I feel like, like at the eleventh hour, like when they're out on the street, like shaking hands right, with right, cars. Right, right, you know, right. I'm basically thinking of um, John Travolta in Primary Colors when he's right. like out at the last minute. Anyway, right. that's how I feel with the film. I'm I'm doing a lot of shaking hands and kissing babies. And, uh, and what did they say in Toronto, just out of curiosity, because that's my hometown? Toronto, um, Toronto was actually kind of hard to gauge the reaction because it was during the film festival, so it was, it felt less like Too much the noise people of it. Toronto, and it felt more like the, the, the industry, people for right, the festival. Right, right. So, um, but we're actually gonna go back to Toronto in like a week and and do a thing oh, cool. there for it. At the, so, at the festival? No, at it, like it's gonna open in Toronto, and oh, we're gonna cool. go be there for the opening, and talk, so I'll know what. It's a the, great film town. I can't 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 imagine it's yeah. not gonna go great up there. I went, I had a I've been to Toronto other times for film stuff um, outside of the festival, and mm -hmm. I really they, it's it a seems great vibrant. It's, yeah. yeah, it's a good. And just one more second on city reactions. Yeah. I, to, the New York premiere. Yeah. How special was that that night? I was there. It was amazing. I didn't know you at that time or no. I would have come and said hello, <laughs> but um, yeah, describe that night. It must have been special. Yeah, it was amazing. I mean, it was, we'd shown the film and we knew, I mean, we knew it was playing well, which was gratifying, but we hadn't, you don't watch it every single time because you don't, it would get boring. Um, but we were like, we're going to watch the New York premiere and it was, um, it was like if we could have written audience reactions to like what we wanted them to be reacting like while we were writing the film, it was like perfect. Just they laughed at all the right spots and the size laugh was perfect. Like, you know, puns get a slight chuckle, like yeah. a nod, <laughs> yeah. you know, and then like, you know, the bigger, it, it was just, it was amazing. And then they, it was sort of, um, it wasn't like a full standing ovation, but it was a half. And I, I know it. And I it noticed like, that, and I felt like everyone should have stood up. No, I, I, really, it was, I really felt but it was, like, but, it was but they great. wanted to. It was great. Though. I felt like it they was, were doing it. Like <laughs> it was, it was a new, new, yeah. I feel like you know, it was my, it was my version of like what I imagined having a triumph feels yeah, like. Yeah. You know, it was like for me, but, it's I can, the farthest I can get is a half standing ovation right. in my head. That's kind of, in so, a way more appropriate, maybe. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and like it had to have been in your mind and in Noah's mind as you're making this film, because it's about New York in so many different ways. That that night was going to be special. And yeah. yeah. Well, we when we even when we were deciding what film festivals to take the movie to, because we go to New York Film Festival. I go to New York mm -hmm. Film Festival, and I love it. And there was some feeling of like. Yeah. Do we hold the film for Sundance? Is that a better market to sell it in? Right. Does it make more sense? Right. Is it smarter? And then we were like, you know, we really just want to go to New York Film Festival and let's go to Telluride and try let's do the fall festivals, even though it doesn't actually make sense from right. a sales perspective. Right. Like, but culturally let's just do it. and it, yeah. it's just it's the it's the end you know it's the end point of that yeah. story that you guys were on and it felt like we did the movie the whole way through exactly how we wanted to and didn't compromise at all and it felt like well why would we release it in a way into the world that we were like suddenly becoming it, calculated about exactly it. and it's really important because i think there was a time you know the film it makes me think a lot about different moments in film history, but mm -hmm. there was a time when directors had a festival in mind. Yeah, sure. Where they, where they were like, I'm gonna go with my new statement to that festival. I know. And you know, Godard did it famously at Cannes, Cannes but, but yeah. like, 
But that's what this city means to you. And yeah. to Noah, it's very yeah. important. It's a center of gravity. And for Noah, New York Film Festival was what, um, when Kicking and Screaming got into New York Film Festival, that basically saved that movie from being straight to video. Yeah. Like, because all of a sudden it was, you know, being noticed at this very fancy festival. Yeah. and. It really changed the course of, I think, yeah. what he was capable of doing. So yeah. it felt really, it was really cool. So I'm gonna link that back yeah. to the first thing you said, which is you didn't know if people still went out to cinemas. Yeah. Oh yeah. So I said that. so you said that, and then you've been around the world to yeah. these festivals. Just give us your like, you know better than me, mm. and anyone else here. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, that uh, what the, what the state of film culture is, uh, 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 you know, around the world. I mean, I mean, people certainly are watching movies and watching content. I don't know. I mean, I think part of this, I, I mean, definitely, but numbers wise, people are not going to movie theaters as much as they used to for, especially for smaller films. Like event films are different if it's in three D yeah. or if it's, you know, part six of a. Fast and Furious or whatever, you know, yeah. like that, those movies get people out, but I mean, part of the thing is, I mean, I feel two ways about it. I'm really, this is what I feel. It's like, <laughs> it's like bookstores in the 90s, like got right. killed by like Barnes and Nobles and Barnes and Noble and Borders killed independent bookstores and then Amazon killed, killed them. Barnes and Noble. But the ones that survived the whole time were struck, like they're still around. Right. The ones that like, for some reason there's, in Sacramento where I grew up, there's a bookstore called The Avid Reader, yeah. which is still going and it lasted and it feels like those institutions are gonna be okay or like Three Lives or Shakespeare right. and Company or whatever in New York. And uh, in LA, there's a bookstore called Book Soup. I mean, yeah, you know, yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. But um, but it this feels like that for film. This yeah, neighborhood, Williamsburg has tons of. Yeah. yeah, and it feels like that way for film too. Like, in a way, we're getting killed. But if we can kind of stay alive <laughs> long enough, then we'll be like, I would say, it's it, it like the cockroaches. Of, yeah. But you know, beautiful cockroaches yeah, yeah, but, that but, are like, it's like yeah, that, indestructible yeah, after in, nuclear annihilation. Yeah. Well, well, I have this theory about things like this that um, you can uh, sort of look at the changes and the innovations in the food world, and um, that's your best barometer and bellwether on how yeah. uh, cockroaches like great <laughs> indie films will survive and even flourish uh -huh. in the middle of the bigger business of film. Sure. Because you know, f food culture across this country um, and around the world has been transforming over the last decade. And I've always noticed now restaurants popping up in Williamsburg or the Lower East Side or anywhere in New York and in Greenpoint or whatever being run by people who 10 years ago would have started a band. And like right. instead of starting with a band, they're having a restaurant and the right. restaurant is like a little cockroach because it's just, you know, it's resilient. It's not part of a big chain yeah. and uh, it's yeah. like innovative and the food is good. And the people cockroach are, people metaphor are, doesn't, doesn't take you go so far. far. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate you trying okay. to incorporate it. We'll stamp that one yeah. out. <laughs> yeah, we have to. Mm. Yeah. But no, I, I think it's, it's hard because I also don't, I mean, I don't love independent cinema for the sake of it being independent. If great movies could be made in a certain way in the studio system, I'd love that. It's not it's not like I mean, we love well-made movies about people and like this movie I took a long time to make. The yeah. script took a long time to write. Yeah. We shot for 50 days. I mean, it it was made on a budget, but it was also made rigorously and if there was a way to do that if movie, if studios were financing movies in a way that they used to and really aren't anymore yeah. of a certain kind, yeah. that would be great. But they're they're not. They're not. But I'm not interested. It's it's like I feel like I get sort it. of like I, get I don't. It. I hope everyone else does, but I just got it. Yeah. yeah. It's not like just about like in, indie no. No. stuff. You, the it's, the cinematic you know um, expression is meant to be you know, compete at the highest possible level, right. even though you only have 
a million dollars or less than a million dollars. Yeah. It's not, we're, yeah. we're not aiming our sights at the budget. We're aiming yeah. our sights at, at the, product, the work of yeah. art and its literary value, its cinematic right. value, and its, you know, its potential to get, to go from two, four to 150 and plus right. screens, screens. And, and counting. I know. Um, so let, my, I'm, uh, let's move a little bit, okay. but not too far. Okay. <laughs> My uh, partner, Shane Smith, one of the other founders of Vice, had a question at the screening that we did uh, for the film, mm. but I didn't pick him. Oh. So he was upset that okay. I didn't pick him. But his question was interesting, and it kind of, kind of follows. Um, he said, you know, great story, amazing, you guys are very accomplished. Um, you write the script, you go out for financing, and everyone's like, amazing, this is a great story, these characters are well written, it's funny, I laughed. Um, and, and you and Noah and whoever else, the producers, get to that point where you're like, and it's gonna be in black and white. Yeah. And that's when everyone goes, ugh, yeah. generally. <clears throat> right. How was, did, was there that moment in, your, in, the, in the process? It was really more, I mean, all of those steps happened. They just happened in a slightly different order. Um, Noah had made a deal, and I had made a deal with um, the people who financed the movie, who, um, it's these Brazilian I guys. I know, I met them, yeah. That's, they yeah. invited me to the yeah. screen. And great they, guys. They're great. Great guys. They're awesome, um, and they were so, like, I mean, they really gave us, right. you know, freedom, and we, we actually didn't show them the script, and we, I they, like that they strategy. knew, <laughs> they knew we were gonna shoot in black and white, and the only thing that they really knew was that they would get a movie, and it would be a real movie. It wouldn't be an experimental movie. It would be a movie that could, a narrative. It was yeah, it was yeah. a narrative. It would have a script. It would be, you know, similar to Noah's other movies, yeah. and that I would be in it. And yeah. um, and so, and they they really took it on faith. That's wild. And they like let us, and they came and visited the set, and then you know they watched the early cuts, and were really supportive, and were totally on board with the festival schedule. And when we got the black and white thing, though honestly was um, when we went to sell it like to right. distributors so they, the producers they accepted were, yeah, they it did. They, they were okay they so to explain now you yeah. go to sell the film and, and love it but yeah everybody said love it but because the way that, and I didn't know a lot of this before but a way a lot of these distribution companies stay afloat is that they cover themselves by making um, output deals with television before, so that even if the movie loses money, they, they are, they're covered. They're and covered. And they can't make output deals on a black and white movie. So they not cannot cover themselves. So Sony Pictures Classics and Focus Features and Fox Searchlight couldn't buy it because they couldn't cover it. It was a too risky. It was actually like, just mu like dollars and cents, it was too risky. So, but um... Was the asking price that high that... No, it wasn't so high, do, but it's... Do you think it was a release, little bit like... Uh, to but, release a film is expensive, even if the sure. price of the film isn't a lot. So it's an investment. I mean, I also think but, it's risky. It, it is risky. But is it just... Is but it's also... Yeah, but it's... It, is it a cultural thing mm. with some producers? Obviously not these guys who are great. Right. But with the distributors that, like, uh, that already says something about this film. Yeah. It's not going to go far and wide. And yeah. how can they... How can that even be after, you know, the... The artist. Yeah, the artist. Yeah, well, that's that, Harvey Weinstein, though, yeah. working So he can magic. just, like, yeah, I mean, push black and white down everyone's throats. Yeah, I mean, I think it's just, I think it's, like, when they see it, it's that they see a limit to how big it can be. Right. So they immediately see it, and they're like, well, we know it can't do X amount of dollars because nobody will, like, at a certain point, people won't go see black right. and white movies. But I think that in some ways it makes it more special and more sought after right. by a certain demographic of an audience if it's in black and white. And there are people like Alexander Payne's new movie, you know, right. Nebraska is in black and white, and you know, Good Night and Good Luck is in black and white, yeah. and yeah. Coen Brothers, um, the... The uh, new one? No, the, the old one, one the, um, the man, the man... Who knew too much? No, that's, that's a, his that's his truck. <laughs> but, um, the man who did something... Interesting, <laughs> yeah. worthy of us shooting a film. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was um, Billy Bob Thornton was in it. Oh, um, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 That it, was the creepy, movie. yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, got it, yeah. yeah. But anyway, it's, so, it's limiting, is got the point. It. 
So, at, when was it a black and white film? At what point in the conception? Really early, really early in writing it, we knew it was going to be black and white. And then over the course of writing it, um, Noah and was doing tests with um, uh, Sam Levy, the DP, mm -hmm. on different cameras um, with the help of um, the late great mm -hmm. Harris Savitas and um, Pascal Danjan, who is a colorist. To the, and, and the three of them kind of cooked up the way it looks. And right. um, it took a lot of testing, though. And, and some of the style is dictated by the limitations of the camera. Mm -hmm. It doesn't handle movement super well. Oh, wow. So we, you, you, yeah, a lot of fixed locking camera. Locking it down. But that was sort of always the way we saw it, too. So it was, you know, because I always... It's not a hand... Yeah, it doesn't feel like... It's not handheld. A handheld no. script, though. When I'm, like, yeah. if you read it, probably. Um... It might feel like a handheld script if you read it. I don't know. I mean, actually, the way I always saw it when we were writing it, and I told Noah this, and he said I see it the same way, is I, I think I remember turning to him at some point, and I was like, you know I see this as, like, moving tableaus, right? And he was like, yep, that's exactly how I see it. And I was like, okay, good. I'm, because, like, sometimes you don't know if you're yeah. making the same thing. And yeah. I think for him, um, you know, Greenberg was more locked down actually mm -hmm. as a look, and Margot was very like, fo like it was all handheld kind yep. of follow shots, and so I, I know he had the, he has the ability to go both ways as yeah. a filmmaker. And, and it, is that little um, um, episode indicative of your creative collaboration? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, basically, it's like me. like yeah. positive, affirmative. Yes. Uh, move on. Yeah. Yeah. Like, cause, and, and isn't that amazing? It's <laughs> like, amazing. Yeah. yeah. It's the only time I've ever really experienced that. I mean, I, I, I kind of excel at getting behind lots of people's worldviews, which makes me a good actor, but like maybe a bad politician. <laughs> I right. don't know. But I can, I can easily kind of get behind a director, the way a director wants to do something. Um, but I've never quite felt like the way I wanted to, it was the same, that I wanted it to do like it. sounds like an exchange, wanted, yeah. right? There's an exchange of vision that, yeah. and when when someone communicates the vision and the other person gets it, it's almost like, great, let's move on to the next part of the challenge. Yeah. And was it like rapid fire creative challenge? Yeah. You know, problem solving, sharing, yeah, I mean, the, the writing process was a little slower. I mean, there was a, because I, I feel like you, with acting and with writing, I feel like it's this, there's a part of you that doesn't know what you're doing, which is the part of you that probably comes up with the most interesting stuff. But then the part of you that knows what it's doing helps organize that other part and shape it and mold it. And you kind of need to like zoom in and out between those two modes of thinking and I think in some ways it, you'll you'll make something or you'll write something and you're like I don't even know what it is and you have to kind of let it sit with yourself and then you're like I know what it is it goes here and that was like so I felt like the writing process it took you know it's per you let it marinate do you like writing I like it uh, yeah and there a lot do you love it <laughs> I love it I find it really sc scary it's really but satisfying, ultimately? The most. The most. The most satisfying. Like, I want to agree with you. The most, but yeah. you don't? I do. You do. I want to. Yeah. Okay, I did. You did, I yeah. just did. I agree with you. Yeah. I think it is the most satisfying, and I love the temporality of the process, because a lot of times you don't know, and you will not pick up the pen for extended periods of time. You're like... I know. And it was only after having some success with that kind of process that when you get to those um, periods, you stop seeing them as writer's block and you start, start seeing, seeing them, them as... You're doing something. You're actually really working really hard because <laughs> you don't want to put bullshit down. You want to really get to yeah. the truth of what you're you're creating and, and, yeah. I think, I mean, maybe it's different for novelists, but I think one of the things that I... I mean, I wrote plays and stuff in college and after college and... I collaborated on more devised ideas of screenplays, but they weren't actually written. And I felt like I'd moved away from writing because I was acting a lot. And then, but I feel like for screenplays, like I think there's an idea of writing, much as there's an idea from math that we've been given by like movies, which is like apparently you have to do all your math on a mirror or on a right. window. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, 
And that's not what like people doing math looks like. Right. It's not like someone like scribbling feverishly or right. being like, I can't look, look at you right now. Like, <laughs> yeah. Actually, a friend of mine pointed out in Goodwill Hunting, there's this scene where they're like doing math together, like him and his mentor, and they're like, and they literally are canceling out things in an equation. And, and the, my friend's a mathematician, and he's like, nobody cancels out things right, like right. after algebra. Right. It's done. No, no more canceling. Yes. And I was like, true, that doesn't make sense at all. But um, but I feel like there's this idea of like a writer who's sitting down like typing constantly, and like play. I mean, novels have a lot of words, but like screenplays and plays don't. You can't mm -hmm. solidly type for eight hours. Right. I mean, you can, right. but it's gonna be drivel. A lot right. of it is thinking, a lot of it's staring out the window. A lot of it is like almost physically organized. Sometimes I just like cut lines out and yeah. try to find the way they're organized physically. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I just feel like this, it's, but this, I, this idea of writing I have from movies is totally misleading and I think right makes me feel like I'm less productive than I am. Yeah, and how long was the writing period for Francis Ha? It was a year. It was a year, Yeah. right. And what were you doing in that year? I mean, I was doing Pre a lot of, I was acting a lot, a lot, so it was also happening in between stuff and in makeup chairs, and it wasn't, um, it wasn't all concentrated. But, but um, how often did your brain go to the story and the character and the, you know, it's funny because it's not, for me, it's like, it's, it's almost like, um, not, it's not act actively, it's almost like I put, I put the money in the machine and the machine does, it's almost like I give myself these questions, like here are the problems in the script, and I don't actively think about them. I just keep remembering the problems sort of in the yeah, back of my head yeah. and then. Yeah, it, they'll solve themselves, but it's not like. Um, was there a joy in that process? Yeah, of like, so what? fun. Yeah, because it felt it felt like I was letting my brain do something, but it I wasn't. I don't know. I wasn't thinking my way through it in any literal way. But in in a way, was you know that that in those, in those moments the artwork is really coming into your life and and, right. is, and is that a beautiful thing so for you? Fun. Yeah, it's so fun. It's also like everything. Because it, 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 it stops being. Anything that resembles a career at that moment, doesn't it? And it becomes right. so much more important about. Yeah. Right. And it's also like it. I mean, like I'm not a saintly person. I'm incredibly prone to like jealousy and pettiness and self-aggrandizement. Mm -hmm. And what's amazing about it is it, it like cures all of it. Like right. the work cures all of it. It makes you so much more capable of being appreciative of other people instead of jealous of them. It makes you, I don't, it, it makes it, you more it, sensitive, right? Yeah, it makes, it makes you, you better. It just makes you more capable of like resting in what you do and knowing that that's enough. And I feel like when I've been thwarted or frustrated, that's when I'm like kind of a, a small person about things. Does that change that process and that kind of like, it sounds like you had a revelation uh, in the mid, mid, midst of this process, does that change the way you think of the business of filmmaking? And and do you, do you think that if that process you described was the process that most people went on yeah. in the production of film, that our film culture would look different? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I I feel like well, I don't. I'm sure everybody's process is different, and and but it. But I feel like if everybody kind of had access to that like total love of doing it and joy and amazement and excitement, like that kind of engagement, yeah, I think it would be different. I mean, kind of, yeah, it would have to be. But then, it kind of, it does. I, I get the feeling that kind of stuff doesn't happen too often. A lot of people, right. even ones that love film yeah. and are very serious, are still, I think, you know, consumed in a you know, in a careerist sort of mentality where yeah. the writing of a script is kind of mechanical and yeah. it kind of makes sense and it's like, wow, that was great and punchy, yeah. but right. but little beyond that. I don't know, I mean, I, I'm of two minds about it because on the one hand, I, you know, I, lo I it was really life-changing for me to make this movie um, and I, I would hope that I have more experiences like that, but at the same time, sometimes I think 
this is, I go on both sides, like, sometimes I think that having, having to answer to an audience is not always a bad thing, and sometimes, like, the mechanics of making a certain type of movie have, they can have an art in themselves, like, I don't know, I was but, watching, like, like, Hitchcock, like, that's, like, he's totally, he's, a master, but he's and and it's inspired, but it's also incredibly precise and mechanical in a way. And, For sure, but it and like, but sometimes it doesn't. Work. I mean, I just watched To Catch a Thief, which I don't think is very good. I don't like it no. as much. It's not as good as his other ones, and I, no. I don't know but why. But it's a very colorful film. It's colorful, and it's beautiful, but it's like, for me, there's something missing in it, and yeah. I can't tell you what, but I don't know, but sometimes I feel like but, having but, that but, kind but of his, structure is yeah, good. The, the, his best films were the ones that were actually most personal to him and deeply motivated by weird... Weird stuff, po yeah. Personal tortures, and, 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 and that film was a kind of formulaic kind of, you know... Uh, yeah, and it was... Whatever. Thief film. What do yeah. you call that? A uh, caper. Caper. Yeah. yeah. A caper. caper. A caper a film. A thief film. A thief film, <laughs> a film about thieves. Yeah. Um, so I want to go just one layer deeper into your psychology as an artist, and then we'll we'll, we'll get out of your brain. Sorry. But, I always feel nervous when I have these kinds of conversations because I'm like, this is just some bullshit I'm thinking this no. week, and then like in ten years, someone's gonna be like, but you said this thing, and I'll be <laughs> like, I didn't know what I was talking about. <laughs> anyway, sorry. So one, one, one more twist of the screw, right? Yeah. Uh, those moments where you're not working on the film because you're doing other things, yeah. but the film is in there, the script, the story, the characters are percolating, and then it comes back to you as a problem yeah. or a question, and you engage with it, uh -huh. and you feel that purity of that engagement, um, do you also feel at that time, because you talked about not forgetting the audience, yeah. this is pretty like self-absorbed, right, this moment. Yeah. Do you not feel also that at that moment of a maximum self-absorption, yeah. that's actually what you owe the audience? Because the thing oh, gets good yeah. when you're fully in. And actually that is what a viewer really wants, is like bring me... Yeah. The, the worst word is like authenticity because right. it gets thrown around everywhere all yeah. the time. But that's what that is. That's an authentic moment. Yeah. And you, you only, if you are allowed to that moment, does the thing on the other end get good for a viewer? Right. Or do you think that's bullshit? Um, no, I don't think that's bullshit. I think that there's something that happens, I think, when you get so deeply into something, too, where um, I think it paradoxically, you almost, like, you lose yourself, even though it is inherently self-absorbed. It's like the self sort of goes away. It's weird. And do you approach some kind of universal truth yeah that probably moment. that yeah. moment then no it's true i i mean I, I mean i have a tendency to speak kind of dramatically about these things so you're totally leading me right down into my comfort zone which is like <laughs> it's like I stay just, here. yeah but um but i do think there is something that happens that kind of you're so in it and then you're gone. I mean, it's almost like you have to give yourself so far that you go away and then... You lose yourself in that yeah. moment and, and, and it's... You okay. come back. Okay. And I was gonna say, actually in France, it's hot. This is like, to this is really like inside baseball, but when fr in, the, in the first scene, Francis and Sophie are hanging out together and fr Sophie's knitting. This is in the montage and Francis reads something to her. Says, she says, oh, this is interesting. And then she reads something. And it's from uh, this book called Sincerity and Authenticity by Lionel Trilling. Anyway, um, because I was reading, reading it and I thought it was really like, and anyway, the quote is to praise a work of art to call it, by calling it sincere is to say at, at best it's like intentions were good or something like that. Right. And like that it, it's almost like used as a slight, right. but like authenticity has greater weight. It's almost like the, right. those like distinctions between the sublime and the beautiful. Right. It's, um, anyway, it's like really great and really Well, sincere sounds like it was an attempt to capture authenticity that failed, and right. the authenticity <laughs> Feels nails like... it. And this is a perfect segue, because I want to get out of yeah. your brain now. Okay. And I want to talk about the film, so you can yeah. get a deep breath. All right. So what is, if you can really crystallize it, the thing the, the object of this authentic quest. When you kept coming back to writing <laughs> yeah. Francis Ha, yeah. it's about a lot of different yeah. things and 
you know, uh, uh, ca ca class, like yeah, the French yeah. and, and the Europeans say, maybe. Yeah. Um, but was there one thing that, like, always brought you back, that pulled you in your guts and in your heart, that you knew, this is what I'm doing here? Well, I mean, I think, depending on the day, there were different... I mean, like, sometimes I read it and I was like, this is terrible, this is a terrible, this is a boring movie, why am I writing, this is... Who even cares? And like, I'd have this sort of like, you know. And then other days I'd read it and I'd be like, it's funny. I don't know. It's pretty good. But like, um, I do think that there is a. I know what I want it to do. I guess more than it, I more than I know what it does. And what I want it to do is like I. I don't know the films that I. Oh God, I'm scared. It's like, I feel like I'm just gonna go into like just emotional gobbledygook about like films I love but I feel That's like okay. it's like a it's a it's it's oh. totally acceptable to uh, talk about okay. that. <laughs> it's not like you're gonna swear like a <laughs> sailor on shore I know um but I feel like I the Francis goes through this this kind of hero's journey almost mm. and um that seems epic in a way even though it's small and I think Finding, like, to me, I mean, I, I feel like I can talk about this even though maybe somebody will watch this who hasn't seen the movie, but, like, at the end, to me, um, her her doing what she does and accepting the job that she does, but then making art anyway, like, choreographing her dance, like, just do, like, there's something in the doing of it and, like, ex and and that, like, there's like a way that she stops reaching for things and she starts being and just working from there. Um, I just, I find it very emotional when it, it, it other emotional. people do that. Yeah. Like my, da my dad, when I was growing up, did for, for himself. And he's not like a hammy guy, but he did stand up comedy like for himself. And I, I don't know, and like, I grew There's up... something like, like triumphant in so that. Triumphant. Like, so triumphant. He so heroic yeah. about that, that, yeah. And, and like, something about, like, um, I grew up watching a lot of community theater. Like, um, like, there was a couple professional theater companies in Sacramento, but it was mostly, like, uh, City College and C um, the State University in Sacramento, and then just, like, community theaters that were non-professional that people like substitute teachers teachers or doctors or you know people in the community who worked at coffee shops would on their downtime be in musicals and plays and I don't it's know a like, huge to me that like well not only is it personal triumph yeah. and and uh, of personal histories but I think it's like maybe even a neglected character in the history of literature or film I was always struck by the character if I was smarter and better, I'd remember the name. At the end of, um, you know, Amadeus? Yeah. And uh, yeah. what's his name? Oh, um, Sco Scalieri. 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 Yeah. And he... Oh, my God, I watched he, that movie you, so many Yeah, do you remember? I always... That scene at the end, yeah. for me, identified, like, a really powerful trope or, or yeah. you know, which is... He's the failed Mozart. Yeah. He's not the good guy. Yeah. He's shit. He was the one stealing. And... And and he's exiting the the, yeah. the whatever the sanitarium yeah. or whatever, and he's like, bl like I bless you as like the. Everyone's playing Mo I, in my mind. Everyone's playing Mozart as he's like yeah. Yeah, but he blesses them right. like uh, like the the prince of failure basically blesses you. Yeah. As as you know. Yeah. It's like in a really thought, interesting character, and 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 not not only yeah. that, but. There are like a lot of real people who had these ambitions to be a singer or to be a, a dancer. Yeah, yeah. And at some point they have to, there is that moment in their lives where they hang up the skates. Yeah. I mean, I think, I really, like, really for me, like the Salieri, like the, 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 the idea that he was good enough to know that he was not as good as him. Exactly. And that he knew it the whole time. And even though he was celebrated and even though Mozart was like down, he knew he was he wasn't as good. And like that's like that torture. so heartbreaking. <laughs> I love that movie. Yeah, like yeah. I didn't really I, I I mean, you know, I I didn't make, you know, Amadeus. <laughs> but I don't know. But there's it, like it, a, there's Yeah. There that's 
I mean, Frances Ha is at that, she's at that moment, right? Yeah, she is. I mean, yeah, I, that's one of the, I mean, that's sort of like the giving up, but the kind of courage and giving up a certain aspect of something is part of it. I mean, there's a few, I feel like there's always kind of like an emo, there's a thing that I'm driving towards and I'm sort of failing in different ways all, mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. I'm always surprised that it's not better than it is <laughs> whenever I see myself act or like make something what? I'm like, oh, God, I thought that was really great. I mean, it's not that it's bad, but it's like for some reason, like I thought it would be even better right. <laughs> like all the time. Right, and know? how about with this film? Do you feel this that way? This is as close as I've come, but I do, I still felt like the first time I, I like watched it all the way through it with all the edits and the fixes, like um, I was sad. I was sort of like, that's it. Oh shit, really? That's all we did? It felt like it was more. <laughs> <laughs> like, and, but I mean, I think that's probably why, you know, everybody goes crazy at a certain point because it, it feels like, you know, you're just trying, it's, it's just endless, like trying at the same thing and failing different interesting ways. Right. I don't know. Yeah, I, um, I was gonna say something s semi pretentious about Godard saying that all of his films are failures and he oh, yeah. always accepted that in advance. They're never gonna be the things that he wished yeah. and he wanted them to be. And yeah. it's the d d varying degrees of failure is his whole cinematic career. In a way, it helps you, I think, getting to get over um, any fear because you're like, well, it's gonna be bad, so mm. I could just start from you, there. Look, yeah, it's, it saves you in a yeah. way, in advance. Okay, um, maybe one last question. Oh, sure. Francis wanted to be something. Oh, yeah. At least one thing, right? Right, right. We don't know if she wanted to get married or anything, yeah, yeah. but she wanted yeah. to, to dance. Yeah. Right? Definitely. And her life deals her a hand. Yeah. And she is kind of Salieri in a way. Yeah. But she finds a new path. Yeah. Where she can have that yeah. and still do the other right. job and the other yeah. thing. Can you detach yourself now from that decision and look back and go, I'm going to now explore the other. Oh. type of person who would have said, you know what? Yeah. Who would like smash their fist on the table and go, I do not accept that. Yeah, I'd like to make a film about that person. I haven't figured out how to do it yet, but I really, I mean, I, I yeah, I would really like to make a film about that person because I think, you know, that, that person's just as real. And completely different. And from completely Francis. different. I mean, I think it would just, yeah, I'd like to, I mean, I'd like to really make more films. I'd like to. I mean, I, I love acting, and I love, and I and I hope to keep acting. But um, the level of um, like literally feeling like there's a weight lifted off of me right. with m making things is is kind of unparalleled. And I feel like um, it, I just hope that I can get out of my way enough to be able to like do it and keep doing it because. Yeah. I don't know if I'm anything. It's an expert at like finding ways to stop myself from doing stuff because, right. you know. Well, don't it's scary. don't <laughs> find ways to stop yourself because yeah. you're a great writer. Oh, it was a great you. film. You should do it again. Thanks. Thank you. Great. great. <laughs> that was really fun. Yeah. Great. Uh, awesome.